What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with OnePlus Nord N25G tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to get the most out of your device. Now the first thing I want to show you is how to get a battery percentage in the upper right corner. So by default, all you get is the battery icon, and of course, as your phone does lose charge, you will at least get some sort of indication that the battery is not completely full, but if you want to get the exact percentage at all times, which is what I prefer, let me show you how to do that. So we're going to pull down the shade, then go to the gear icon right here, which will take us over to the settings. Then go to search, type in battery, and you'll see right there battery percentage. So go there, and then you can see right here, all we have to do is just check that on. And then now, up in the corner, we have the percentage. So it doesn't matter where we are throughout the operating system, it'll be there at all times, so it's certainly very useful. Now there's a few other options in the same area where we were able to access the battery percentage. You can see here's another one, it's called real-time network speed. So this is pretty interesting. If you enable that, it'll tell you what your network speed is in the notification bar, so that's pretty unique. This one's pretty interesting as well. It says status icons, so if we go there, you can actually pick and choose what icons up top here you want to even show up. So for example, if you know that you already have NFC and you don't want the NFC icon to be up top at all times, you can then check that off. You can also check off Wi-Fi as well. You can check off mobile network, even the battery icon as well. So if you want to, you can really change things up in your notification bar. And of course, you can bring all these things back as well. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to take a screenshot with the OnePlus Nord N25G. Now there's actually two different methods to do this. Now the first method is kind of expected, and all you have to do is hold down the power button and volume down for about a second, and it'll very quickly take a screenshot, then from there we can share it, or just dismiss it if we want to. But there's also two other screenshot options, so let me show you these in the settings. So once again, we're going to pull down the shade, go to the gear icon, go to search, type in screenshot, and you'll see it right there under convenience tools, screenshot. So these two options are enabled by default already. You can see the first one is three finger swipe down and then three finger touch and hold to take a partial or scrolling screenshot. So for the first one, three finger swipe down, you just take three fingers and simply swipe down and then it takes the screenshot as you can see right there. And then for the second option, you just touch and hold and then now you can select the part of the screen that you actually want to be screenshotted. So that's pretty cool. Then from here you can crop it, you can add some notes if you want to as well, or some drawings. There's even more editing options as well. And then you can share it or discard of it completely. So pretty awesome that we do have multiple methods here for taking a screenshot with the device. You even have the option further down here for the screenshot preview window to be on the right side instead of the left side, which is how it is by default. Now you might have noticed that when you first set up your OnePlus Nord N25G, you had the option between choosing from gesture-based navigation and the traditional Android 3 button navigation. Now I decided to go ahead with gesture navigation instead, which as you know, you swipe up to go home, you swipe partially up to go to your recent apps, and then once you're in an app, you swipe from the side to go back. But let me show you how to switch the type of navigation in case you happen to change your mind from what you decided to go with. So you're going to pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in nav, and you'll see it right there, navigation. And then once we're here, you can see that we have the two different options. So again, it depends on which one you decide to go with when setting up the device, but I definitely recommend that if you haven't used one or the other, that you should give the other a chance at least to really see which one you prefer. But we're going to go right now and switch over to the buttons. And then after doing that, you can see here that we can also modify the layout of the buttons. So if we want to have the back button on the left side and recent apps button on the right side, we can do that switch right there. So we can then go back or your recent apps right there. And then going back to the regular gestures, which I don't need to learn, I already know how. But you can see here that you can also hide the gesture guide bar if you want to. It still works the same, it's just hidden instead. You can also adjust the haptic motor as well, so if you don't want that to go off when navigating around the phone, you can do that as well. And then, there's also a mistouch prevention. Gestures in some games need two swipes to take full effect when you use full screen in landscape mode. 
So that's certainly a helpful feature there as well. So I definitely recommend trying out these two different navigation methods just to see which one you prefer. Now the next thing I want to show you is a quick and easy way to get to the camera. You can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system and all you have to do is just double press on the power button and then you can see just like that it immediately pulls up the camera. So a nice quick and easy way to access that and that is already enabled by default. Now by default with this device, we don't have a dedicated row for numbers on the keyboard. Now of course you can go in the corner here to pull up the dedicated number row, but if you want it to show up here at all times, I'll show you how to make that modification. So what you're going to do is from this area here, go to the gear icon which will take you to your keyboard settings. Then from there, go to preferences, and then you're going to go to number row right here. So now with number row enabled, we're going to go back, go back one more time, and then now we have a dedicated number row. So that's really awesome. Now in addition to that, there's a lot of other settings that you can modify here in the keyboard settings. So you can change the theme of your keyboard as well. So if you want the keyboard to be blue, for example, I'm going to choose that. And then now we'll go back and you can see it looks completely different. You can also choose from different background images and other things too to put on your keyboard. So I definitely recommend going through the settings here to really customize the keyboard to exactly how you'd want it to be. Now the next feature I want to show you is called App Cloner. Now essentially what this does is that it will create a duplicate of certain apps that are compatible with it. So you'd want to do this in a situation where you have multiple accounts for a certain app, but the app doesn't let you actually use multiple accounts without signing out and then signing into another one. So an example of this would be Snapchat. Snapchat doesn't have multi-account support. There's also Facebook, which doesn't let you sign into multiple accounts at the same time. You'd have to sign out of one and then sign into another. So essentially with App Cloner, it will create a duplicate of those apps. Now I'll show you how to access that. You're gonna pull down the shade, go into the settings. You're gonna go to search. You're gonna type in App Cloner and you'll see right there, there it is. And then now from this area here, Whichever apps are on the phone that are compatible with this will then show up right here. So unfortunately, Snapchat actually is not compatible with App Cloner. That is kind of a surprise. But you can see here that it does support Facebook, Instagram, and then also Messenger. Now Instagram does officially support multiple accounts, but if you prefer just to have two copies of the app instead, with each copy having a certain account signed in, then you can at least do that here. So it is nice that you at least have multiple options, but unfortunately, despite having Snapchat installed on the phone, it looks like it is not currently compatible with this app cloner feature. Now the next feature I wanna show you is called Quick Launch. So you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in Quick, and then you'll see right there, Quick Launch. Now you can see here that you touch and hold the fingerprint sensor until icons appear. Without lifting your fingers, slide it onto an icon and then release to launch the corresponding functions or app. So we're going to enable that. And then you can actually choose right here what you want your various options to be. So you can see they have some of them already here, such as creating a calendar appointment or going over to your assistant. But we're going to add in another one right now. So let's see, what else do we have? We have some different functions here. So you can have it go to taking a portrait mode photo or a selfie. You can even have it open up a new tab on Chrome. So a lot of cool options there. And then we can go over to apps to pick different apps. So I'm gonna have it pull up, let's see here. I'm gonna have it pull up Instagram. We'll choose that, okay? So let's now give this a try. And you can see from there, I can then pick from these options. I'm gonna go with Instagram. And then now it pulls up Instagram. I will say, I don't think that feature is necessarily that useful, but it could depend on your particular situation, so it is at least worth trying out. Now heading back into the settings section of the device, we have a lot of different customization options. So going into ambient display, there's a few things you want to know about. So the first thing is that the ambient display is on by default, and when you pick up your phone, it will show you some things on the display. So we'll try that out. Okay, there we go, a few things popped up there. You can see here too that you can choose for the ambient display to be always on. So you can have it be scheduled, so maybe at nighttime you don't want it on. Or you can have it in power saving where it won't turn on if the phone is in power saving mode. You can also have it set to all day, so I'm going to try that. And we'll give it a second here to pop up. And now you can see I didn't do anything at all, but it will still show the time and some other information as well. So when the phone does rest down on a table, as you can see right here, the always on display does stay always on. Then heading over to display and brightness, 
We have options for light or dark mode. So if you're in a movie theater, for example, I could definitely see dark mode coming in handy. We also have eye comfort mode. So if you enable that, it'll make the display a bit easier on your eyes, especially useful in the evening. We also have auto rotate. There's also auto screen off. So I have this set right now to 30 minutes, but I believe the default is 30 seconds. Now what I recommend doing is trying out some different times here. You might prefer the screen to stay on for two minutes, five minutes, it really depends on your personal preference, or maybe even less time at 15 seconds. So definitely check that out and see what you prefer. There's also screen color temperature. So there's the default right there. You can go cooler if you want to, or warmer. And you can also go over to the screen color mode to pick, so we have vivid or gentle. So we'll go to gentle, and it's a little bit different, but kind of similar. And then of course, Vivid is the default there. There's also options for font and display size. So if you want the font to be bigger or if you want a different font, you can change that here. You can also make the font smaller for that matter. There's also the More tab where there's options for screen display. So if you want the front camera to be hidden, you can choose which apps you want that to essentially be enabled in, which is kind of interesting. You can also have full screen display by app. So if you want the app to be stretched to fill up your entire display, you have that option as well. And then heading over to personalizations, you can pick between different icon styles, colors as well. So you can pick an accent color for the whole operating system. You can also pick how you want your notification drawer to be. So you can pick the shapes of the icons if you want to, which is pretty interesting. And of course, you can go here as well to choose the font and display size. And then the final thing I want to show you are some home screen settings. So to access your home screen settings, you're going to hold down on the wallpaper and then go right there to home settings. And there's quite a few things here to see. So the first thing is, is that if you want icons to be added to your home screen every time a new app is installed, you can enable that. We also have swipe down to access. So right now swiping down will bring up this thing called shelf. You could also have it bring up notifications and quick settings instead. So you can see right now when you swipe down, this is what they call the shelf. I guess it's just a collection of useful and somewhat relevant information. Now I personally prefer to have that bring down the notification panel instead. So we'll switch over to that, go to save. So now when you swipe down, it'll bring down the shade here. And then if you swipe down even further, it'll bring up all these various toggles, which is really convenient. Now this next one is not enabled by default, but I definitely recommend enabling it. It's called double tap to lock. So once that's enabled, if you double tap on a blank area of the home screen, it will turn off the display. So there we go, very convenient. Now this final one is pretty interesting. This is called hidden space. So with hidden space, you slide outwards with two fingers in the home screen to enter it and you can see that you slide to the right in the drawer to enter it as well. So let's give this a try. So we're gonna pinch out, and there we go, there's hidden space. So you can see here the hidden space is ideal for storing specific apps, and only the selected apps can be hidden from the OnePlus Launcher's drawer. So kind of interesting there. Slowly pick a hidden application. I'm gonna go with Facebook. There we go. So that's now in there. And then now, I don't see Facebook anywhere in the app drawer, but if I swipe over, you can see it's now in the hidden space. And then same thing here, if we pinch, it now pulls up the hidden space that has that app in it. So that's a pretty interesting feature and definitely something that is indeed hidden. It also looks like you can enable a password for hidden space as well. But this concludes tips, tricks, and hidden features for the OnePlus Nord N25G. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful and hopefully you learned something new today. But if you enjoyed the video, definitely give it a thumbs up let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments section below. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.